I'll go here to James chapter 3. I want to start somewhere. Um, let's just see something here. We'll start verse 1. I'm going to read down for a little bit. And it says here, My brethren, be not many masters. Or, you know, where you're... It says, be not many masters. Talking about, like, people over, people um, teaching. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So he says, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in what? Not in word. Amen. In word. So he said, in word. Amen. So he tells us not, not he says, not to be many masters or instructors or a teacher amen because what what does an instructor or a teacher do they use words amen so it says for many things we offend all why because today people are easily offended even if you're right they are offended amen you may say the right thing and a person gets easily offended for you telling the truth because they're touchy, they're feely about everything's about feelings. Hurt my feelings, justify my feelings. But they, they, he said, if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man or mature person who's able to control or bridle the whole body. Amen. So your words affect yourself. Amen. People wa want to conquer. They want to take over a lot. But you got to first start with yourself. If you can rule yourself, then there's a lot of other things you can do. But you got to be able to know how to control yourself. Amen. And it starts with your tongue. Because he says there, he said, if any man offend not in word. And, uh, you know, in many things that people can offend all. That means like where people say loose lips sink ships. So people who have loose lips, they just loose about stuff. And they call it today venting. wonder where they just got that. They were watching some... Uh, ventilation system or the microwave where the vent is open all the air blows out that's where they call it venting now they just come out with words like you just got a release well some things you just don't have to amen because you got to remember you don't want to say everything some people are just letting out because they don't know they're holding it in when you're with the lord you give it to god amen you're not trying to hold it in. Nothing's wrong with holding something in if it's good. Because when Mary was raising up Jesus, and then Jesus was around the doctors and attorney, when they walked away, he was three days with them. They journeyed back to find out where their child was. Obviously, there was more than one person with them. And they lost their child. They lost the God. And God didn't lose him. He knew what he was doing, but they lost him. Imagine that. Here you are. You with the son of God, and then you're so busy with everyone else, you forgot your own kid. Thinking, well, what, Jesus be on a milk carton? Where they'll have missing? He ain't going to be that because he ain't going to ever be missing. But it, when they got back, he heard them. He was answering questions and asking questions. Amen. And then 
when she said, don't you know we were worried and concerned about you, where you were? And he said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? And she said she held, no? yeah, he said, woman, don't you know I must be about my father's business? It was another mom. Thank God she knew he was the Lord. Be like, who you call a woman? I'm your mom. No. But he said, uh, what's it called? He said, she kept all these sayings in her heart. See, that's a good thing to keep. That she laid the word of God in her heart. It says, lay up his word in your heart in Psalms 119. That what? You might not sin against him. Store the word up. You know, you got to store the word in your heart. Amen. And say, what, 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 it's good just to get the word. I don't care. You could play it audibly, the Bible. You might be up. You're in the car. It takes you time to go to work. Put the word on in there. Amen. If you didn't have time to read, get the word in there. So at least you get it, but begin to practice and get it in you because you want it in your heart. Some people have mental breakdowns, anxieties, and worries. Why is that? Anxiety doesn't come from nothing. Anxiety comes because it's something you're thinking on. And it causes you to get worried. That's why the Word of God says in Philippians 4, be anxious or careful or worried about nothing. See, if people don't know the Lord, that's all they can do is worry about it because they don't know who to give it to except other people. If they can't help them, what are they going to do with it? They're just thinking about the problem all the time, and it causes them to have a mental breakdown or anxiety attack and all that because they're thinking on the problem, and they don't have the answer. Amen? We, we talked about before, I'm, I'm kind of going away, but he said in Isaiah 26, 3, it says what? If you put it up there, thou shall be in perfect peace, whose mind is what? Stayed on thee. Look at this. It's three parts. Perfect peace is because of what? It, it keeps you. It guards you. It protects you in perfect peace. Whose mind, your will, your soul, your emotions, because your emotions is intact to your mind. It, think about it. If you don't think your emotions are intact with your mind, have a problem come to your thoughts and then watch how it affects your emotions. If someone gets lippy with someone, and they ain't governing their body with their mouth, and someone says the wrong thing, watch how their emotions come off. They're going to want to fight. They're going to want to talk crazy because now their emotions are intact. And they become touchy about it. But it says when your mind, so it says, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the problem. No, on God, because he trusts in God. Now reverse it. Thou shall be in worry, whose mind is stayed on what? The problem, because you what? Trust in the problem. So your mind's thinking about the problem because you're, 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 reliance is what only on the problem because you don't have the answer and what is it doing it isn't going to keep you in perfect peace it's going to keep you in probably perfect worry you just reverse what it says it's the opposite think about when you take the word of god here and start from the bomb because you trust in god your mind is stayed on God, and what's the result of it? You're kept in perfect peace from God. So when you trust in God, your mind's on him about concerning the situation, and you're kept in what? Perfect peace because of God. 
So there's d ways to put that so you can get the thing. It's sometimes you got to see it from the other side so you can understand the right side. Amen? So here he's saying that. So back here he says in James, it says the same as a perfect man who's able to control what bridle the same if a man doesn't offend in word he's a mature person he watches what she says amen and he's able to control his whole body by his what his words look at this he's not troubling himself he's controlling himself the word says this. I'm going to show you this right here. Watch this. Another word. Right here. Read it. Go here um, to. Uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter let's see proverbs it says right here in proverbs uh yeah right here proverbs uh 21 23 uh, 23 I like that one verse but it says whoso what keepeth it bridles controls his mouth and his tongue what's he do he continually keep it whenever you see eth Keep means to guard, to protect, control. That means continually. Whoso, whoso continually controls his mouth and his tongue continually controls what? His soul, his mind, his will, his emotions, his emotions from what? Troubles. So if you control your mouth and your tongue, you control troubles that go on in your life. Amen? So he keeps his soul from troubles. That says more than one. That isn't singular. That's pure, pur, pure, pur, pure, plural, plural, same, pure. Pur, say it again. Pearl. Plural. Why am I saying plural, not singular? Wow. Lord, help my language here. Yeah, so there it says he keeps his he keeps his soul from troubles. That means the word in Hebrew means tightness. You have your mind feel like it was tight before? Like it's it's pressure on your mind? That's tightness. It also means as far as adversity. Who's the adversary? The devil. It means tri tribulation or affliction. So who wants to walk around with afflicted thoughts, having affliction going on in your life because of your mouth? So if people can learn to control, this is one of the scriptures I learned a long time ago. I still got to practice it today. I know I slipped up a little bit like yesterday, <laughs> controlling my mouth. Sometimes when you get in one area, you just want to get in the whole area out and be like, hey, I'm not talking about cussing. Don't get me wrong about that. I'm just saying when you say your problem. God, if you ain't delivered from cussing, you need to come up here and we need to pray for you because you shouldn't be cussing. Because he said keep your mouth from, you know, as far as conversations, shouldn't be cuss words coming out your mouth. Peter did it, but that's before he got filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, when he was like, he, they say, that's the man there. He goes, man, I don't know who you're talking about. They asked him a second time, 
he was like, man, I, I'm not with him. And then the third time he came, he just started cussing and be like, man, they don't even bother talking to me. And what ended up happening? Then Jesus looked at him. That makes someone cry right there. Lord turns by him getting whipped and beat. And then the cock crowed thrice. And then Jesus, when you said denied him the third time, the Lord looked over, getting whipped, beaten, everything, bloody, and he looked right at him. And he couldn't even handle it, the guilt, the shame about what he did because he knew what Jesus said was that happened. You know, sometimes people don't even know what happens till it happens because the pressure comes in their life. And so it says, he that keeps his mouth, continually and keeps guards his tongue will keep his soul from troubles amen if you don't believe me here it says in psalms look at this this is scriptures you can write down for yourself i haven't even really got into where we're going but it says here <clears throat> the book of psalms one excuse me says here in Psalms 1. It says, whoops. It talks about uh, putting a Uh, Psalms 141. It says right here, 141, in verse 3. It says, set a watch. Amen? That's a guard. A watch. Who Who's going to watch what you say? You should be watching over what you say. If you're not watching it, then you're just letting everything come out, whatever may, and that's it. But it says, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Guard the door of my lips. Protect them, keep them. And what's the next verse say? Incline not my heart to any evil thing. Why? Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. So you don't want to incline. He said, incline my ear unto your sayings, not incline them unto evil things. You know, partaking in people's nasty conversation, they talking crazy and all that. You know, some people, if they're in the world, you're like, oh, you know, you're hearing it. But it's not sitting there talking as they do. And to what? Practice wicked works with the men that work iniquity and let me not eat of their dainties. That's delicacies. Amen? You don't want to eat of that stuff. And that doesn't mean you're eating their food. It's talking about their dainties, what they feed off of. Like uh, what I used to say up north, I'd be like, man, I ain't feeding into that stuff. Why? That means you ain't feeding into what they saying. So you don't, you put a door over your mouth. Someone says something, nah, uh, you know, you get, one brother I was talking to, and he was just telling me, he was about to talk about someone, he goes, no, nah, I'd rather not even say nothing about him and just pray for him. You know, I'd rather not even talk about him and just pray for him. Amen? Because you don't want to get over there where you get the gossiping and get the talking about everybody. You just rather say, let me pray for him. Amen? That way, I don't, you know, because you don't know what a person may do later on. You know, they they could have repented. I don't know. You know, especially if I don't know them, why I want to give a bad report about another person when I don't even know them personally. Then you put that thought in another person's mind who don't know them, and they already got a perception about someone they never even met. So now they got to guard on them about someone else like man i gotta watch this person now if you know the person the person ain't quite right and all that stuff sometimes you give heed to people hey listen now 
But if it's someone you don't know and all that, because someone else is telling you, well, that might be because I'm only hearing your side. I don't know their side. It could be something that's going on between both of you, you know, unless the person's of a, you know, well, pretty precise, you know, as far as reputation that they have that you know well. But still, it's always good to hear two sides to everything. Everyone who always wants to talk about someone, I don't care if it's divorce, whatever. It's always them that look good, and the person's always bad, the other person. Till you hear the other side, and then they talk about them, and they don't want you hearing about that, because now it's making them look bad. You know? They'll be like, let's say, well, let's get them both in the same parties. So we can hear, and then what? Then you get to hear in both sides. Now you like, okay, I see what's going on here, you know? Because everyone wants to always look good. It's always the other person's fault. Man, if people are just honest, maybe it ain't their fault. Maybe it's what you're doing. It's your fault. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> could be. And so, uh. So he said, set a guard, a watch over my mouth, O Lord, before, and keep the door of my lips. Back in James over here, so we'll get over here. He says right here in verse 3, he said, behold, we put bits in horses' mouths. Why, why do we do that? That they may obey us. If you got, you know how you get a, a horse? To obey you? Because if they're wild, you got to break them. You got to break them in. You can't do it. They just don't automatically say, hey, jump on my back. I'm cool. You could drive me all. No, nah, go ahead and do that, and you'll see what have you be flying over again, kicked and stomped. No, -uh, they have to break them in till they finally submit. And now we could go there, but sometimes God will do that where you get broken in. So you finally learn because you're so undisciplined, so unchastised in the world that when you come to God, obviously he fills you with your love and all that. But there's certain things where, man, you get to learn what you're going through to obey. Jesus learned obedience what we said by the things he suffered, what to obey and not to obey. Now, when you learn to obey what he says, things get a little smoother. They get easier to do. When you don't, then you can't blame God for it because he already told you what to do. So you can't be like, oh, Lord, why you do this? No, nah, the Lord ain't did nothing. He told you before you do it to do it this way, but when you don't submit to it, what is up happen? And you see the result of it. And so he said that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So it controls that one bit, controls their whole body. That's what he's comparing it to. So their, their mouth has power to control your life. Amen? If you don't think so, when you decided to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it should have changed your life. Amen? It should have altered your life. There should have been a change going on. Praise God. So he said, we turn about their whole body and watch the next verse. Behold also ships. So he's given two like comparisons. Ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, storms that go on. Yet they are turned about with a very small helm. So a storm can go in your life, but you can turn your life from the storm by what you say. Think about it. Jesus was in a storm. He was sleeping through it. They had to wake him up. It didn't move him at all. He would have just kept sleeping and been like, man, I don't care about this storm. So Lou, past Sozy was doing when the hurricane came, she was sleeping. I was walking around the house. I was kind of checking out the hurricane. I would know I wasn't stressed. I was trying to see if I can help someone. I'm looking out the window because I like doing things. 
So I was on guard. I couldn't open the window. It got sealed shut like Noah's Ark. So I'm like, I, could, I couldn't even open the sliding glass. It blew in. It blew in so it was stuck. So what I do, I ran outside. I saw a thing uh, flip down the, the uh, gutters, and it was hitting the neighbor. So I ran in the back. I thought, hey, I can help people. What's it called? I, I like doing that stuff. Tree fell down. I wasn't about to just jump in the midst of that, but if they, I was trying to move it out the way so cars, if they had to come. But I decided to run around the back. It didn't look like it, it was windy with rain, but man, when I ran through the grass, my feet got like it went in like, like it got sucked in the ground. <laughs> we mean that's right. But I made it through. I ran around, was able to rip the thing off and stuff. Yeah. So it was cool. She was, she wanted to make me look like I was afraid. I was afraid. I rebuke. I was kind of interesting, cause I never seen a hurricane, so I was kind of checking it out. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was. When we were in Oklahoma, there was tornadoes. I was checking out. Matter of fact, I'm not getting off subject. We were there was a tornado that hit the freeway before we were leaving. It was when I was at the mall. So I went outside with the other guy, and we looking at that thing. I want to check out, see what it was. I could have rebuked it, but it was across the other way. It wasn't coming towards us. It was just kind of like, man, this thing here, just seeing what, you know, coming out of the sky. You see them on TV, it's different when you see it in person. You know, you see what goes on, but that's fine. So here, we ain't, but she slept through that hurricane. She was just sound asleep. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, we'll uh, keep going on here. <laughs> no. Yeah, he he sealed the door window. So it says here, behold the ships though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds. Yet they're turned about with a very small helm, whether soever the what? Governor, the person controlling it moves it. Right? So whatever he controls, it's moving. That's what he's saying. You control your mouth. God's given you the Holy Spirit so you can pray in the Holy Spirit to control your mouth. So and say if some crazy stuff, just start praying in tongues. So you can pray the perfect will of God instead of talking crazy. But you pray in tongues. So he says, they're turned about, it's only a small thing. Even though winds are blowing so hard, there could be trouble going on in your life so hard. What does it say? He that keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps his soul from fierce winds, from trouble that goes on in their life. Sometimes it goes on and people start talking all kind of craziness because that's what's in their heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If the word ain't in your heart, guess what's coming out of your heart? All kind of gibberish. Be sound like Babylon. Talking crazy. Everyone, they looking at you like you all confused. God's like looking like, man, why does it sound like confusion coming out your mouth? You're supposed to be speaking my word, and you're speaking the other words of the world. So he said, if you control, and you can. That's why he gives you the Holy Spirit. Amen? The first thing after you get saved, because you confess with your mouth, that's the only way to get saved, is that you ain't saving by doing something, you're saved by saying something. Amen? Why does it change after that? It doesn't. If, if saving you is by what you say, why wouldn't it, why would it stop there? You keep speaking his word over your life, and it will change your life. You keep speaking his, your, his word in your situation, it will change the situation. Sometimes it may be so hard because you see the circumstance looks real. And it could be a lot going on, and you just 
feel like you need to say what's going on. You want people to feel sorry for you or have pity. For, man, forget the feelings. Speak his word. That's what you need. Because you do it yourself. You got to make up your mind. I need to speak his word in my situation. Nothing's wrong. Sometimes you need people to help you, to encourage you. But guess who the comfort is? He's the encourager to encourage you. He's the strengthener to strength, make you strong. That's why he said, let the weak say I'm what? Strong. So he says, this is it. So he says, that's why we got to speak his word, just like if you want to control the ship, you take the ship by the wheel and stir, turn it. Now they got computers so you can hit something. Amen? But how come people just don't want to take control of their mouth and they just speak it? That's why people listen to all kind of music. And then they start speaking what they hear them. They got the rhythm going. They're like, oh, I'm just singing music. Yeah, you don't, do you even know what you're saying? Because it's power in what you're saying. And if the music's crazy and you singing that, guess what you're going to reap? I don't want to reap everything I'm saying at times, unless it's from God. Because your words are seeds. And your thoughts are seeds. If you put the seeds in your garden, your mind, guess what's going to start growing later on? So you got to get in there, and it takes work. Just like you got a garden on the ground. The other day, I had these, these weeds growing, man. Oh, I hate those things. I saw I started rebuking them, saying, this land's blessed. You ain't supposed to even be here in the name of Jesus. They had little pricks on that thing. They're called prickly uh, weeds. Man, they look crazy. They grow out and have this. And then I tried grabbing one day with my hand. It was like, man, little needles all in that thing. I said, forget that. I ain't grabbing that no more. I took the weed whacker, started chopping that thing off, and poured some killing, uh, uh, what's killer weeds on it or something. Because I, I don't want that stuff on my lawn. You know, weeds. That, no, weeds were under the curse when man fell. Amen. It was never there in the beginning. I didn't even have those weeds, and I saw it. And I'm like, Lord, are you trying to show me something here? I got weeds going in my life. <laughs> I need to get rid of this, Lord. <laughs> but, I, we, uh, you know, I took a hedge thing and cut it. But sometimes you got to, even though you cut the top off, don't mean the root's out of there. You got to kill it to its root. And what, what you, you, sometimes you got to weed it out by rooting it out of your heart. And that's getting new word in you. Hey, man, it's getting the word of God in you where you trust in his word more than you trust in the problem. So he says here, verse 5, even so the tongue, there it is, is a little member. It's a little part of the body. It ain't that big, but it could speak big things. Your foot ain't speaking nothing. Your hands, you could do sign language, but your feet and everything else, it doesn't speak it out loud. But your tongue, though it's a little member, it boasts great things. It's speaking crazy sometimes. He said, behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Amen? You don't want to ignite fires in your life. You want to put them out. That's why he said, out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of what? Living water. What does water do? It, 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 it quenches the fire. Amen? So you could put it out in someone else's life. They may be talking cra crazy. Cray, cray. I was talking about crazy. But it says, Proverbs 15, 1, what does it say? A what? 
soft answer turns away wrath. But what does grievous, do, grievous words do? That's boasting a lot of great things, stirring up fire. Grievous words stir up what? Anger. See, that's overcoming evil with evil. That ain't good. But if you did, if someone's wrath, anger, and you're speaking soft, you're not challenging the person. Like you want to prove you're right. You know, where you can prove you're right. It's how you say it. You don't have to prove it if you tell them. But a soft answer doesn't make it sound like you, you, you know, you trying to start something with another person. So you putting water to the fire and it'll cool them down. Amen. I'm not saying every single there's time and place for everything. Amen. It's devil talking. You could just rebuke him. I ain't need to be soft on him. You could be hard on him. Say in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, devil. So he says here. In verse 6, it says, The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That it does what? It defileth the whole body. Isn't that what Jesus said? He said it wasn't what goes in the body that you eat that defiles a man. It's what comes out of your mouth. That defiles a person. That makes them unclean. Makes them foul. When you, when you hear people talking, cussing and all that. that, that ain't that, It don't even look good. So it, A long time ago when you're in the world you think it's cool and all that. Some people just don't even know how to talk. That every other word is just bad and foul. Then you got probably a spirit and you need to be cast out. Because if you can't control that, I mean, you can't even have a conversation without words just slipping out all every other sentence. There's something wrong. And then why would you want to even listen to music that talks like that? That's probably a demon speaking through that person. There's cussing demons. Because where you think cussing comes from, it comes from the devil. He's the one that curses. You don't believe me? Read the word. If you look at a demon that really talked in the Bible, that's why Jesus say, shut up and come out of them. But it says, it defiled the whole body and set it on fire, the course of nature. A course, that's like a route. That's of their whole nature. And it's set on fire. What of hell, the man? That, that's not good. Taking them right words with their mouth. Their mouth can take people to hell. You don't believe it? If your confession can take you to heaven, your other confession can take you to hell. Think about it. Your confession could take you to heaven by accepting Jesus and have him Lord over your life. Your other confession could take a person right to hell. And God didn't put you there. They put themselves there because they were going there anyways. Jesus came to rescue out of it. He wanted to save your mouth from destruction. Amen. The course of nature. <clears throat> Think about this. Out of all the things. That God said in the Garden of Eden, you can eat anything, but of this tree you do not eat because it's a knowledge of good and evil. And the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. He didn't say the day you pick it off the tree. He said you eat of it with your mouth. And that caused them to fall. Amen. And what did it do? It set the course of nature on that path just from what they said just from what they ate it was with their mouth that's where it started and then after they ate it you saw what changed their whole language you didn't see that look at that we go through it a lot go here to Genesis I want you to see some 
Look at what it, look at the first thing Adam said after he fell. Right here in Genesis 3. Verse 8. Or I'll start at verse 7. It says, And the eyes of them both were open. They both ate it. So now they saw something they never seen before. Their mind was pure before. It was never defiled. After they ate it, their mind became defiled, so their eyes were open. And they knew they were naked. Think about this. Who's the only one that wears clothes in the world? People. No animals do. You don't see them getting up in the morning, changing, and putting clothes on. None of them. All the animals. Ain't no one putting clothes on. They might have fur on them, but they, they don't change clothes. They, they all wear the, what they've been wearing since they were born or made, created. But except people. Why? Because their eyes, our eyes were open. And what happened? They knew they were naked. You don't see the animals like, oh. Now you got people clothing them. I see them clothing dogs with their little sweaters and all this stuff. But I'm just saying, monkeys are putting diapers on them. Come on, man. But I'm just saying, what's it called? It says they were naked. And what they do? They sewed fig leaves. They covered themselves. And made them aprons. They wanted to cook right in the beginning. Look at this. They put aprons on. Isn't that what you wear when you go cooking? Put aprons. Look at that. I made aprons right in the beginning. Chef Adam and Chef E. So next verse right here. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, what? Hid themselves. No one said nothing yet. They might have talked among each other, but no one said nothing to the Lord. They hid from God, the presence of God, among the trees in the garden. They think a tree is going to hide them from the Lord. But that just shows you how far they fell from him. Here's God that made everything, and you're going to hide behind a tree. What do you think is going to happen in the end? In Revelation, they're going to hide themselves in caves and rocks, telling it to fall on them from the presence of God. Just like Adam was hiding himself. Ain't nothing going to hide from God. Where are you going to flee from the presence of the Lord? And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, where are you? He knows where he's at. He just wants to hear what Adam's going to respond. And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. The first thing that came to him that he spoke was what? Fear. First thing, he said, I was afraid. That's how people are today. They're afraid of God. They don't have God loves them. You don't have to be afraid of them, but their perception about them is defiled because it's a fallen perception. So they think God's there to just whip them down. Some people, you hear it, they never, I'm not going to go to church. I go to church, the old building may fall on me. Well, if that was the case, they'll, oh, there won't be no churches because it would have been all fell for everyone that went in them. It wouldn't be no church. It'd be all collapsed every time someone goes in it. But here he's saying he was afraid. Why? Because he was naked. And he hid himself. So he knew he was naked. Somehow being naked in the presence of the Lord isn't cool. So he said what? He was afraid and he was naked and they hid themselves. You know how many people are hiding from God today? That's why some don't want to go to church. They hide in themselves because they know what they are. They're afraid. 
and they know they're naked. He said every creature is naked and what? As far as in the book of Hebrews, it says in the chapter 12, it says all creatures are naked in the sight of God. Or it's Hebrews chapter 4, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so he says here, they said there was naked, and watch what the Lord says here. Verse 10, oh, 11. And he said, who told you that you were naked? No, no one told him. He just ate of it. When he ate of it, then that changed everything. He said, have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded you that you shouldn't eat of? See, when the Lord gives a word, if you submit to it, obey it, it'll go right with you. Amen? They wouldn't have to face any of this. It wouldn't be all this chaos and trouble. You know what ended up happening? Because of that, that he ate of, everything fell. All of it fell. Everything that God built fell at one time when he ate of that. Because God gave him everything. Amen? God didn't say, well, I'm, I'm keeping all of it for myself. I got control. You just stay here and don't do nothing. God said, no, I'm giving. You think God blesses you and then God can just say, oh, I, I'm controlling all this. No, God will bless you with something, but it's up to you to maintain what he blesses you with. You can mess what God blesses you with. Because why? He gives, blesses you with it, but you have control over what you have. He wants you. He told Adam to maintain the garden, keep it. Amen? He gave it to him. But it was up to him to keep it protected and maintenance it, take care of it. Amen. If God gives you something, you're responsible for it. Can't blame God for it. God blessed you with it, but you, you can't blame God on it. He holds us accountable for what we, we just got to be good stewards over what he gives us. Amen. That's what you got to think about. Are, are you a good steward? First, over what he gives you, he gave you salvation. So, you know, it's not of your own works. Praise God for that. If we try doing our own salvation like they did in the Old Testament, look how many times they kept messing up. They up uh, I'll be coming with the lamb every day. Not every, not every week they have it. They did it once a year, but every time they messed up or something, they would have to bring a lamb sacrifice, but it was once a year. They had to bring something, man, as far as that. But thank God, the only thing we have to do today is just confess. Amen? It's not like works as far as where we have to kill a lamb all the time and go to them and put blood all over it. All you got to do is confess. It's so, it's not hard. You just confess and tell the Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And God forgives you. Amen? That's what's good. But here he is. He, he, they ate, and it caused the whole creation to decay, to fall. So, what? so look at here. Let's go to James. It, it caused everything to fall. I'm, if you don't, here, I'll show you scripture. It caused everything to fall. Let's go because I'm going somewhere, and then we'll, we'll, we'll continue. But I want you to see something. It, just keep that in mind. Because of their mouth, what they ate caused everything to fall. You see homes that things can happen and fall because of words. People say things bad to people. Put down people, speak negative. Well, that doesn't build anyone up. Be like, hey, I want to be someone great. That day when you tear them down, tear them down, tear them down, it do it doesn't help. Amen. We're to edify and build one up. It, it takes it takes something to do that. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit, saying you're blessed. 
I believe you. And it's not always talking like you can't tell them the truth to correct whatever. But I'm saying you got to learn where you're t when to edify and build someone up. Amen. To speak the word over them. And so he says here, look at this, verse 7. It says in James, yep, for every kind of beast and of birds and serpents and of things in the sea is tamed. And it's been tamed, it's been controlled, it's been, you know, as far as by mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It's an unruly evil full of what? Deadly poison. It's like when you talk, it's like poison in someone. For real. If someone speaks real bad and talking crazy and all that, that, that isn't something nice. It's poison. It's like bitter. What was what, what it? It says right here, look at this. This is what we want to be. <clears throat> Go here, uh, the Proverbs 12, 18. It says this. It says, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. Their tongue is like a sword always stabbing people. You're up there shanking people and stuff with your mouth. they like, oh, man, they, I got something for them. Use your tongue. You don't even need a gun or a knife. You're just stabbing them all the time. You know, when you stab someone in the back, that's what they use as words. It's where you speak words. You stab them in the back. Yeah, that's like doing the same thing. They just use an analogy that's the same thing as that. Or you today we all he that speaketh is like a shooting of a gun. You just blasting people with your mouth, throwing grenades at them, blowing them up, taking the Uzis and just blasting away, shotguns just blowing. Them. <clears throat> That's what it, the, the person that speaketh. It's like a piercing of the sword. You're always cutting someone with it. Ain't got nothing nice to say. But what does he say here? The tongue of the wise. Who's a wise person? And we know in Matthews, he that heareth his word and doeth the same as a wise man. He that heareth it and doeth it. He that heareth it and doeth it. He that heareth it and speaks it. Amen. He's doing what he hears. Amen. And then what is his tongue going to be like? His tongue is going to be wise like health. It's going to be health. It's going to be healing. Amen. It's not cutting people open all the time. You just leave the wound all open. Yeah, good for them. Let them let that thing go crazy on them. Like you just cut them straight open and leave it on the table, like a a doctor with no license, huh? You just say, "I'm about to perform surgery. I'm gonna help you." Just cut them right open, and then you leave them there and walk away. Yeah, let them sit there and die. No, nah, the tongue of the wise is health. Amen? And how do, why is it health? Because we know in Proverbs chapter 4 or chapter 3 <clears throat> or 4, 22, it says this. For they are life unto them that find them and their health and healing to all their flesh. That's what the word of God is. It heals you. Amen? So that's why the tongue of the wise is health. It's like medicine. You're helping someone. People's words can either help them or destroy them. How many broken up homes there are? from? It ain't just broken up because of nothing. It's broken up most of the time because of words. I'm not saying people... Because things people do as well, but a lot of it starts with the words. You don't think so? I'll tell you so. Because a word comes in a thought too. It does. It could be a silent word. 
you start thinking about the wrong thing and then you end up doing the wrong thing. And then it was still words that hurt it because it took a thought to be able to play it out. They don't just come by accident. Oh, I don't know what I just did. I don't, I don't even know how I got in this situation. What what just happened? It's like Aaron. Oh, I don't know. I just threw the gold in the fire and then here comes a cow out of it. I don't know how it appeared. It just blew up. You get caught in the act of doing something. Well, I don't know how I got there. I don't know. They made me do it. Yeah, right. Come on, man. I'm just saying you, you, people got to take account of what they do. You know, some people, they don't never want to be accountable for their own actions. They always want to put it on someone else. A mature person takes accountability for what they do, and they confess it and own up to it. Amen? That's what you do. You own up to what you do, so that way it can change. Amen? But when it's always the other person, pff, you, you it doesn't ever fix your life. Because you have to examine your own self first to see what needs to be changed. Amen? So the tongue of the wise is health. So his word will bring healing. Amen? And look at here, one more word. Proverbs 16, uh, 24. Look at what it says here. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb. Anyone ever eat a honeycomb? No, it's like, it's like wax, isn't it? I mean, you can't eat it. You could chew on it. Yeah, you can't eat that thing. You'd be eating wax. Well, yeah. So a uh, pleasant word to her is a honeycomb. Sweet to what? The soul. It ain't bitter. And it's what? Health to the bones. It's healing to the inward parts of their body. That's what it does. It heals them. Amen? That's why it says a merry heart do a good like medicine. If you're able to cheer people up, they're sorrowful. You speak good words, you cheer them up. It does healing in a person's body. Walking around sad all the time, that ain't healing. Man, that's like a person depressed. But uh, healing is you're cheerful. You know, if it was the opposite way, then the healing your people would be sorrowful all day. Nah, -uh. if you see someone healthy and cheerful, that means they're healed. They got healing in their life. A person depressed down and all that, that ain't healed. Amen? That's something broken that's going on in their life that needs to be restored, to be restored health unto them. Amen? So this is what he's saying. It's the tongue. Praise God. Somewhere I want to go with this. But let's finish up here. And then we'll, we'll yeah, continue it. Right here in James 3. And we'll, we'll close. But it says, <clears throat> verse 9. It says, therefore, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after this similitude of God see that's why listen he's saying we bless God he that's why Jesus said bless them that curse you he didn't say curse them that curse you <laughs> that's what you were doing before you got saved you if you hey you know if someone ain't saved you ain't hearing them well bless you God bless you they ain't saying that. No. It says they're made after the similitude or the image of God. Amen? You ain't talking about animal and all that. So look at what he says here. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. He said, my brother, these things ought not so to be. You got to make up your mind. And watch what comes out of your mouth. But you got to watch what goes in it. Amen? Not your mouth, in your ears. And what you're thinking on. Because the only way to change is through the word of God. Amen? The words of the world ain't going to change 
what you believe, and it isn't going to change what you say. There's life and power in the Word of God. When you think on the Word, it changes actually what you say. It gives you peace. There's power in it for peace in your life. Because when you read it, there's a peace in there. Amen. There's, so, there's power in the Word of God. But you got you to gotta get the time to get into it. Amen. You got to take time to speak it. Amen. I'm talking about hearing the Word. And not even just that, reading books about the Word of God. I, and that's what I got to do. I'm going to order some books and remind me because we're going to get some material in here so people get the Word of God in them. I'm talking about, you know, different subjects in your life. Amen. I know I said that before. I'm going to go order them. Maybe, I know maybe tomorrow I'm going to order a bunch of different books, different languages so we can uh, have the Word of God in there on different subjects so you can read it. Because you need to build your faith up. Amen. It's one thing me just, we're up here, we'll preach. But if you could take a book home and read or listen to something on the radio. I li When I drive to work, I listen to the word. Amen. I might not always be like I, you, sometimes you got to get disciplined yourself and get up early before you go wherever. But I, I'll get in the word or hear it to, so I can start my day off right. Amen. You know, I want to start off their day yelling and screaming and stuff, talking all crazy. That don't make your day good at all. You're already up, already fighting and everything. Who wants that stuff? That isn't uh, healthy, man. <laughs> Praise God. But you want to start off where you get the word. Amen. Then it changes the course of your day. Amen. And so he says right here. We'll leave it. Verse 12. Can the fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries, berries or either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield water, salt water, or fresh water. Now, I don't know about you. We got salt water here in Florida. Go ahead and drink that. See how that thing tastes. You could just drink it out of your fountain if you got a water softener in there. I don't think it uh, tastes, uh, it feels good on your skin, but it ain't going to taste good in your mouth. Forget that. And it says there's fresh water. That's what everyone wants to drink, amen? That's why you go buy bottles of water so you can have something fresh to drink. That's what God wants to give you, fresh water in your life, amen? Not defiled water. That's the world. It defiles you. Even your own mouth can defile yourself. Some people feel like they're unclean by their own words that they speak all the time. If I'm telling you, you listen to that stuff all day. Foul language and all that stuff, that ain't cleaning your life up one bit. That making your life a wreck. The only one thing that can fix your life it make you clean and whole is the word of God. It gives you peace. It doesn't give you problems. Amen. That's why we read he that keeps his mouth and keeps his soul. His tongue and his mouth keeps his soul from trouble. Let's say this together. Lord, I thank you for putting a watch over my mouth that I can keep my mouth and my tongue from wrong sayings to keep also my soul from troubles in Jesus name. I thank you Lord that you have given me the tongue of the learned that I can speak a word to them that are weary in due season. Today, I forgive those who trespass against me, even as you forgiven all my trespasses. 
I bless, Lord, those who curse me because you called me to be a blessing. I thank you that I can watch today over the words of my mouth. Help me, Lord, to control my mouth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you don't know the Lord today, we just want to welcome you today. You heard about the words. So this is one thing to start. You want to change your life, you change your words. And the only way to change your words is by believing in what the word said about what changes. And that's Jesus. If you can acknowledge him today that he died for you, he rose again for you, and you believe on that, he said you will be saved. The first start of a changed life is to make a choice and change what your confession is. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life to forgive me of all my sins. I believe you died for me, and I believe you rose again for me, that I could be made free in Jesus' name. If you said that, you're saved. That's what he said. It's as simple as that. You have to mean it with your heart and believe it with your heart, and you'll see a change in your life. Well, we want to bless you if you've done that. Just write us. Let us know. We want to be able to give you material. Amen so we can help you grow we just want to know you're blessed you're loved amen and we want to see you again in jesus name so connect back with us praise god let us know what you like about it or hear these messages if they've been a blessing to you amen we'll love to hear from you and share a testimony praise god have a blessed day